All right, hey everybody, welcome back. So I have been meaning to make this video for a very long time. Um, and basically what we're gonna do today is build the ball python enclosure that I have been attempting to tell every one of you guys who has bought a ball python um, from me how to do. So I normally spend like an hour or two per, per customer to make sure that they got um, the cage down perfectly. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna refer everybody to this video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, Feel free to leave comments if you like or don't like some of the things that I'm doing. We can talk about why I choose to do these things the way I do. Um, I know everybody has a little bit um, different things they like when setting up enclosures. Uh, this is my way. I know it's not uh, perfect, but it is. it works for the snakes that we provide and it works for me and it's worked for years. So here we go. All right, so to start, this is a 20 gallon enclosure. Um, now, I know that when a lot of you ask, you get a baby ball python. This is specifically going to be catered to ball pythons, not to any of the other like king snakes and things like that. So when you get a baby ball python, you have a choice of getting a tank size. And I always recommend a 20 gallon. A 10 gallon, which is like about this big, is fine. The problem is going to be overhead heating. Um, I do under tank heating and then I'm going to talk about some overhead heating. And with a 10 gallon, it is very difficult to monitor that temperature from getting too hot, mainly is what ends up happening. Now, a lot of people say, well, shoot, I don't want to buy a 20 gallon and then have to upgrade when the snake gets bigger to a 40 gallon because that's just extra money. I get it, but a baby ball python is like this big and a 40 gallon is this big, and you're gonna have another issue of attempting to keep that snake in the correct temperature zones as well at that size. So although it costs a little bit more money, um, we all know you're gonna get a second ball python. So since that's gonna happen, you can have an extra backup 20 gallon tank in the future. So, all right, let's get right into it. So this is a 20 gallon. Now, uh, let's take, a, this, this tank was donated from my brother. Thanks, Andrew. Um, this is a, top that comes off like this. It does not slide. Uh, I actually don't recommend this top. This is kind of old school, um, and one of the reasons is a strong snake can just push this up. So, the other reason why I'm not huge on uh, a top like this is because when we, when we talk about putting the um, probe inside, it these, since they're so old school, they really don't have a little notch uh, to put the probe down in, where the slide tops do have that notch, where you can kind of get it in, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So regardless, here's your top for today. Um, so we talk about uh, the start of all of this is going to be the, um, the heat pad. So I'm going to get that heat pad and I'll be right back. Actually, I just re realized the bigger one is in my car. So we'll cut and we'll come right back. Right. So I got uh, a couple different heat pads I want to share with you guys. So this is uh, one of them. And the other one is this, which is a bit smaller, um, different. This is, well, this is a cool one because it has my name in it. Zach Rowe. Hmm. Uh, so this is small, right? And on a 10 gallon tank, you're probably dealing with something like this. Um, however, this is a 30, it says 30 to 40 gallon terrarium size. So let's open this up and let's see, let's see what we, we got here. Uh, so it says 10, on this right here, this is Zoomed 30 to 40 gallon terrarium, number one seller. Let's talk about why I would go with something like this over that small one. And the reason is, these are gonna, you want this, this heat pad to cover about one third of your enclosure on the bottom. So on a 20 gallon, if I'm putting it just like this on the bottom, down below, which I'll do in a second, that's approximately one third of your tank. This is gonna give good heat for that hot side of your tank. It's also gonna provide some air heat, which we'll also get from the, um, the the overhead heating. So what we're going to do with this, which a lot of people do, and this is the cheap, cheaper way to do it. It's not necessarily wrong, but if you want to be in, um, you know, more accurate with your temperatures, I'll teach you how to do that. You guys uh, can take bits and pieces of what I'm doing and use it um, in your tanks, and that can be enough for you. Or if you want to go 110%, then you can follow everything we're doing here today. So 
you have this heat pad. It comes with a little bit of sticky side here, and all you're gonna do is lift up your enclosure and put it right down on the bottom there, and it's gonna stick to the glass, okay? So then you're gonna have this plug outlet over here. A lot of people take this outlet, or take this plug, and they go straight into the outlet. And these heat pads will provide about 110 degree temperature. That can range a little bit. Now, that's great, but we, I would rather have the temperature where the snake is sitting at 90 degrees. Somewhere between 88, 92, whatever is fine. But if this is spinning out 110 and you have some soil, well, it's not being monitored. It's not gonna go up and down. If it gets cold in the room, hot in the room, uh, it's just not gonna adjust. So the correct thing to do in this situation is get yourself a thermostat. Now for this video, I'm gonna use and then show you this thermostat. It is not a good thermostat. I do not recommend this. I will show you um, this called D-Link, I believe, and I'll put it a uh, picture here in just a second. Um, for those of you who want to order it off of Amazon, it's like 18 or 19 bucks, and I highly, highly recommend that version. Very simple to use. You know, you hit the set button, put the temperature that you want in, and then that's all you have to do. So this plug goes into this thermostat, which is the same as the other one. So we plug it directly in here, and now this thermostat comes with a probe, a little metal probe. Same thing with the other one, right? So what we're gonna do is we are going to open up our, our enclosure here and what this metal, yeah, let's, let's come on, zoom on in here for a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this metal. Uh, the, the correct tape to use is a foil tape that you can get at Home Depot or online. What, what we're gonna use, or even I, I have used duct tape successfully. Right now what we're gonna use for the video is gonna be blue painter's tape. So what you want to do is you want to tape this thermostat on the glass right where the snake is going to be sitting. Just like that. Okay, so you can see underneath it, that's the heat pad down there. Now you have the thermostat and traditionally on a slide top, if you look right up at the top here, there would be a notch cut out right here so that these cables can come in and out like that. And then your, your top slides shut and your cable can go out. Now this can just get, you know, taped up the side and then boom. So yes, it's, it's you know, hanging on your glass on the inside, but if done correctly and taped in, a, in multiple spots, it will stay put. So that's what I would recommend you do with your thermostat and your probe. Now, the reason we do that is what we're going to do next is we're going to cover that probe up, right? So let me, there's a couple different beddings. Everybody asks, what's the best bedding? that I personally recommend or that I personally use. Now, those are two questions, kind of the same, kind of not. I use multiple different things for different purposes. One is a little bit better visually, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is Eco Earth, okay? Eco Earth is your ZoomEd product. And ultimately, it is just coconut fiber ground down to a fine powder. The next, which I'm going to get from over here, just a second. The next is Reptichip. Now, Reptichip is what I use for all of my ball pythons in my ball python breeding tub systems and tub racks. This is my go-to on everything. I love this product. It does not, from my experience, it does not mold. I've used, you know, I call them knockoff brands um, or other brands, and I have had bad, bad results. Um, a lot of mold, a lot of mildew, things like that with doing the exact same stuff. So this block right here is gonna cost you about 25 bucks on Amazon. Um, you can order them in bulk and it will expand. They have videos like I think on their, it says on their little YouTube video, cut a couple of holes, put a hose in it, put it in a big bin. And for a person who owns one small ball python, this thing's gonna last you a year, honestly, if you're spot cleaning. So this expands out into a big, you know, uh, bucket. So this is what I, um, these are big chunks, okay? 
So with the big chunks, what I've noticed, this is the exact same product at the end of the day. What This is just ground version. This is whole version in chunks. So what I have noticed is that this is going to dry out quicker. This is going to hold a little bit better moisture. Um, this is prettier when you're talking about a tank, and this might be not as pretty. Um, so what I would recommend for most of you is to mix them. Mix them together, have a little combination in here, and um, I would even recommend there's uh, something called Reptis Soil. It's just dirt, but it's treated and you know recommended for reptiles. I like mixing even that in a little bit. So maybe a third of each of these and you got yourself a nice uh, soil. So let's, I'm going to use this for building our tank today, um, just because I have not made that up right now. Well, what I'm going to show you next, and I think is a really important piece to this, is showing you how much of this Eco Earth we're going to put in. If you dump this whole bag in, you may have this deep of a layer of Eco Earth, and that's going to cause uh, some issues when we talk about heat from their, you know, underbelly. So let's let's throw some of this in here, and I'll show you what amount I would recommend. Okay, let's take a look at that, see how much. We can always add more, we can always take some out, so don't be afraid. Um, very fine stuff, very fine. So, I'm gonna put it all around here. Okay, so that's, that's it, that's what I'm gonna use. And if you can kind of see from the outside of the tank, it barely goes up the side. And that's about, if I'm measuring, it's about one inch thick. Okay, and, and if we come zoom back in, I'll show you why we, I want this. So if you take a look here, look how easy it is for me to dig down, okay? These ball pythons are not gonna, they don't have hands. If you didn't know that, snakes actually don't have arms. <laughs> so they're not gonna be digging like this, right? So they can burrow, they can nestle like this down in. And so what, they, what that helps with is if they wanna get a little bit warmer, they can do that. And if not, then when you leave it like this, it's just enough thickness to, to not burn their bellies, but it's also, and, and it also will give good humidity, which we'll talk about in a minute. So just one inch thick, and that's about it. Okay, so now we talk about the temperature, which we, we use this, this thermostat. If I set the thermostat now to, let's say, 90 degrees, the problem is that on the glass, where that, that probe is, it might be 90 degrees, but above one inch of soil, it's probably going to be like 85 or 84, something like that. So to offset that issue, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set it a little bit warmer. So instead of going 80 or 90 degrees, you might want to go 95, even maybe 100 degrees, depends on your soil, how deep, whatever. Let's say that we set it, and again, that's where you go onto this little machine and you push some buttons, which you can read the box of, you know, the one that I recommended. It's very simple to set, and you set it at 96. Now, here is the number one thing that I cannot tell you is how much I recommend. This is it. It's a general, the company general, temperature reading gun. Okay, so you can see a little red dot there. This is not the ones that you guys, you know, do, hello, do I have COVID or not? I don't have COVID, yay. Um, okay, what this is, is used for, uh, you know, people in the workforce, if they're gonna go test, you know, um, a hot pipe or a cold pipe, if you're working on a uh, air conditioning system, whatever. Why these work so well is they're the most accurate reading of temperature. And when anybody calls me, uh, some of my customers, and they say my snake's not eating or, or whatever is wrong, I always say, did you, do you have one of these and did you read the snake's temperature? This costs about 15, maybe 20 bucks and lasts forever. You just change the batteries. So when you have this and you have now just set your temperature gauge to 95, let's say, after an hour, you can come back in here and put your dot right on top of where the snake is going to be sitting. And that will read, that should read, I should say, about 90 degrees. And if it does, you're good. If it's reading 86, 87, maybe you crank this up two or three degrees. Um, and if it's too warm, crank it down, right? Pretty basic stuff, but I can't tell you how amazing this is. Now, 
the, you can see these two little black things that are stuck on the glass over here. Again, this is from my brother. Um, they may check, I think these ones check temperature slash humidity. Okay, I don't recommend any of that. I don't think you need that at all. I've never used these ever and I don't, and I've had perfect sheds most of almost every single snake that I've ever had. So then why do people get them? Why do people recommend them? It's because everybody worries about humidity and they worry about um, ambient air temperatures. Follow what I'm saying through this video and everything will just work itself out. You do not need these and you will find out that the snake eats fine, eats or actually eats great and sheds fine, which are the two reasons why you wanna ultimately have those temps and humidities correct, okay? So when you have this heat pad over here, when you're reading the temp on the other side, you're gonna notice it's in a, in a normal room temperature in winter in California, at least it's gonna to be too cold on the other side. So that's what we're gonna talk about, overhead heating, okay? Now, this is again for a glass enclosure, which a lot of you end up using. I use, on many of my ball pythons, we use tub systems, which are plastic tubs of some sort with either they slide into a rack system or they have a, a top to the tub. And those work awesome, but are not visually appealing. Um, so that's why we're kind of talking about the old fashioned tank idea. Um, these tanks don't normally hold the best humidity, which is why I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas to uh, negate that and make it better humidity. Okay, so so far we got underbelly heating, we've got the soil um, layered down. And back to really quickly, uh, these little ones. Yes, yes you can use this. For a baby, you can, you can use this, you can get away with it, um, and you can put your hide right on top. Uh, the only thing is if the baby kind of ventures out a little bit in this area, right off the bat he comes off that heat pad, so that's why I recommend the big one. So if he's anywhere even remotely on the warm side, uh, he or she is going to be warm. Okay, so we're going to toss this over to the side for a minute, and we're going to jump into the next thing on our list, which is a hide. So, Here's the hide that may fit right like this. Now, I, this was the hide that came with this cage. I do not recommend this hide, and I wanted to show it because ultimately, a lot of people will get a hide like this because it looks cool and unique. This hide of this size on a 20 gallon tank is gonna be for a medium to almost adult not, not an adult, but a medium ball python, okay? The problem with that is it's not snug. It's just not snug. So when, when you have heat coming up from the, the bottom, these snakes normally live in a hole in the ground in Africa, and they want nice, snug areas. So what I would do is I'd recommend getting a hide about half that size, something for the snake to grow into a little bit, but on the same, um, ultimately, is not going to be too big for them. Um, let me get a hide, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found a hide that I think is a happy medium to uh, having the snake not outgrow it overnight, but also probably gives you about six months or so um, for your little baby. So take a look, this is it. And we'll compare it back to this much, much larger one here. Okay, so this is gonna be snug. It's gonna give the snake a, a, a nice warm area to hang out in. So what I recommend is this is your warm hide. This hide goes right here, okay? Goes right on top of that heat mat. Now, what I also recommend you do is um, we're, we're gonna have the water dish and then I'm also gonna recommend that you have another hide on the cold side. Okay? The question is why do we do that, right? Let me get the water dish, I'll show you why that one is or what size I would recommend. Something that they can soak in. Uh, this is a fairly nice size for a baby. You can go a little bit smaller if you'd like, but something that will um, at least be able to completely so soak themselves in. So I'm going to put this water dish more on the cold side. It does not need to be in the very corner of the cold side. Um, and I actually think um, having it somewhat close in the middle is, is fine because a little bit of heat near that water will actually get a little bit more humidity into the air. So, but again, it doesn't matter. Somewhere not on the hot pad, okay? So, that leaves us with this little space over here and a little bit of space here. So what I would recommend is having that cold, what I call the cold hide. Now, it can be a little bit smaller than this. Um, it can be something like this, which I think is really unique. So, 
This is something that you can pick up at, you know, Petco or PetSmart. Um, and this can be used as something for climbing and all that, but also can be considered your cold hide. Has a big open area inside, they can hang out, you can put some moss in there. Um, and the reason I like having a secondary hide is because if they don't, if they're too warm, these snakes don't just like being out in the open. So now they're gonna slither around and be like, okay, um, I'm on the cold side, but I don't wanna just sit out in the open, so now what do I do? So if you offer them at least another hide, they can go in there, hang out, take a nap, do whatever they want, and then go back onto the warm side. So this, um, in this scenario, I might move the, the water dish a little bit over, I might put this like this, and then maybe add some fun little plants, something like this, you can put them, um, down over here, put something else in here, and there you go, okay? So now, talking about moss, let's see, I have the moss right here. So this is a moss that, um, this is your sphagnum moss right here. Put it in a bucket of water, put some water to it, gets nice and, and um, damp, and then you can hide, you can put a little bit of that in the warm hide, you can put a little bit of that in this um, big tunnel system, and then you can also just disperse it a little bit over, throughout the cage. You do not need to go overboard. Um, you know, these animals, like, they aren't from, like a Brazilian rainbow boa needs a, a really high, intense, humid environment. These snakes, do like a little bit of humidity, but they don't need anything crazy. So don't, don't go overboard. Um, uh, also, you don't want to get this in the water dish because then the water will actually kind of soak into this and then that'll wick out and, and basically drain your water dish very often and you'll have to continue refilling that on a daily basis. So um, this is a, a brand Imagitarium. Um, it's a nice brand, I like it. it. It's cheap and it ends up giving you a lot of uh, bang for your buck. Okay, so with me so far, so we have all these different things set up in here, um, and I think at this point your snake is going to be pretty happy. Now, we got to talk about the last couple of things, which is overhead heating, and then uh, last but not least, humidity. Okay, so um, let's talk about the overhead heating. So we're going to put our top of our cage right back on here. Okay. And last is right here. So this is your standard heat lamp. You can get these from all the different reptile stores. You can also get these from Home Depot um, for pretty cheap or on Amazon or anywhere else. All right, so where do I put this thing and what's inside, right? Here is a ceramic heat emitter. That's what it's called. Okay, you can get these, like I said, Amazon, uh, Petco, PetSmart, pretty much anywhere, okay? And these are the best thing that you can use for these snakes. Now, they do come with some issues. One is a ceramic heat emitter, un unlike, you know, a light bulb. A light bulb will do a similar thing, but this will dry out the air. So you have to make sure that the, um, the humidity stays up with the water sprayer, which we'll talk about in a second. That's the, big, the biggest issue with these. Other than that, they produce the best heat, consistent heat, and easy to monitor um, without any light. So, plugging this, this thing in here, screwing it in right there, and having this heat emitter somewhere in the middle. You do not want it on the cold side. Obviously, you're gonna have an issue. The belly heat is coming from the hot side, the uh, ceramic heat emitter on the cold side, the snake's not gonna be able to get out of that heat, okay? So what I would do is I would recommend putting it somewhere in the middle. This is probably a 100 watt ceramic heat emitter. You do not need a 100 watt for a 20 gallon tank. I'd recommend getting a 75 watt is probably pretty standard. They even have 60 watt and they, they do have a 40 watt that may work um, if you cover most of the top, which we'll talk about. So 75 watt is my recommendation. Um, and putting it like this. Um, I would also, this, this big log in the middle is fine, but you don't wanna make it so that the snake can get too close to that heat because reptiles are kind of silly, and sometimes when they're burning themselves, it doesn't really trigger very quickly, and so they may burn themselves. They shouldn't with this, but they, they may, and they won't really realize it until later. 
Um, okay, so where are we plug this in? If you plug this directly into the wall, you're going to have the same issue as we talked about with the 110 degree heat pad. So again, I know this is a little extra, but another thermostat, 18 bucks, same thing. Plug this into that thermostat. This one, actually, weirdly enough, has two separate probes and two separate um, plug outlets, so you can actually set them separately. I know that there's other better ones than this. This one is almost impossible to figure out and how to set, but um, this is an example of a double, and they do have those out there, so you can try to look for those and, and do that. Otherwise, you get another $18 one, and this plugs into uh, you know your thermostat, and you have your, your other probe. So on this one, let's pretend that we have a separate thermostat. Here is your secondary probe, and again, what I would do, a lot of the probes come with little suction cups, um, what I would do is it would go through that little little uh, side thing on the top and I would actually tape it, if we can zoom in here for a second, I would tape it right here. Now, why do I tape it near the ground and not up here or even in the middle? I really like it right where that snake is going to be. So what I want to do is I want to set the ambient temperature to, and actually I should say that I would would rather it a little bit closer to the cold side. And I want that ambient temperature in this cage to go from 90-ish on the hot spot all the way down to 75 to 80 degrees on the cold side. So that's what I want pretty much year round for this snake. So the way to do that is, like I said, have this near the coldish side, set the thermostat to a 77 degrees or 75 degrees, whatever you like, and this goes right into it, and what it does is it it pulse, it gives um, some energy to your your uh, heat emitter, and that'll turn on and off as needed to keep it always at that temperature. Let's say we're on a hot summer day in your room, and all of a sudden your room temperature is 80 degrees. If you plug this thing directly into a wall without a thermostat, your snake's cage is going to be 90, 95, maybe even more all the way around, and that can really ultimately kill your snake. So instead of that, having this thermostat in place, ultimately it will say, hold on a second, you said you want what? 77 degrees on the cold side? It's already 80 in the room. We're not even going to turn you on. So this thing stays off during the summer days. Now the cold winter days, all of a sudden it's icy in your room. This thing will be on full blast all day long and ultimately keep the tank a nice temperature. Okay. So last but not least, um, we're gonna we're gonna hit on humidity, so I'm gonna go get some humidity stuff, and we're gonna put that right in. Okay. Last but not least, humidity. So humidity, and I will also say light. So you may be saying, okay, well, where's the, the light for this snake? So first off, these snakes are a nighttime snake, so they ultimately come out at night, like to be active at night. So during the day, they're gonna be hiding most of the time. So if you have a window in your room, um, that can provide a lot of nice natural light and that will give them nice day and night cycles. Another way to do it is put another one of these with an LED light, something that does not produce heat. Low wattage, something that just gives some sort of light in here, you can put it right next to it. This is a timer, $5, Home Depot, Amazon, whatever. These are the best things ever, the reason? You do not need to wake up in the morning and turn that light on for your snake and at night turn it off. You do not need to do that with this timer. It's pretty, uh, very, very simple to use. I'm not going to go through all the details, but basically you set it and at 8 a.m., boom, light turns on. 8 p.m., light turns off, done. Five bucks and saves you all that time of, oh, did I turn on the light? Did I turn off the light? Whatever it is. So I would use this only for that LED kind of light just to give visual light. This thing can stay on night and day because it doesn't emit any light. All right, so like I said, lastly is your humidity. So um, these glass tanks are very poor at um, holding humidity. Wooden tanks do a lot better. PVC is out there now, melamine, whatever it is. All of these hold humidity a lot better. But if you choose to do a glass tank because it's nice and easy, um, Plastic pieces, whether these, these actually are, they come from different tanks that I had around. You can, um, you can kind of take a look and cover the top right here. 
Uh, you can cover the top like this. You can put little towels here. You can put books on top. Or if you want to go all out, which sometimes I do, like normal, is I take a big piece of, this is acrylic or plexiglass, and you can actually tell, you can go to the local shop. There's normally local shops um, that, that sell and cut plexiglass, and you can give them the measurements of your top. Um, you can actually just measure this piece and then exactly this piece and have them cut two pieces. It'll cost probably 20 bucks. Cover the top and that's it. And that's going to help increase your humidity drastically just by covering the top. Um, so that's number one. Now number two is water, watering down your enclosure. I get so many people who stress about this either because they think they're gonna water it, they're gonna overwater it, or they don't know if they're underwatering it, whatever it is. I'm gonna show you right now how much water you should be doing. So, um, this is extremely dry, so I'm gonna take the top off, we're gonna look right inside here, and let's, let's dive into how much water you should be doing. Okay, so, on a tank of a 20 gallon tank, right now I just used this very dry product, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to get at least this first soak down. So if you have a very dry tank, you're going to start off by getting it nice and, and moist. So this is a big time sprayer that costs maybe, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that at Home Depot. I highly recommend a sprayer like this because it does nice even spraying and you can get underneath the, the um, hot spots. But let's, let's just watch. Um, there's different nozzle so you can go with the when you tighten this up it, it becomes a nice even spray so we're going to use this even spray and we're going to go ahead and just start to get this cage soaked down okay don't be afraid to put a little water in here now i've i've heard and seen some horror stories of people oh like just their snake's been swimming in their cage but what i'm doing right now looks like a lot on the top of this soil but it's really not and I'll show you why. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna get, this is again the first spray down. So this first spray down is gonna be more than normal. So I'm still hosing this thing down. It looks like it's a lot of water. It's not, I will show you why. Now this is their hot spot, right? So we're gonna give it a nice spray down. This is again, just the initial spray. Now it looks like this whole thing is all flooded. But what I'm gonna show you right now I'll just use, I think, my hand. Take a look at this. I do that right there, completely dry now. So obviously that is not the best, not enough water, okay? So one thing that will help is that, um, that uh, sphagnum moss that we put in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit it again. I want this to be nice and moist that if you pick it up, and you squeeze it, you're not getting water dripping from it, but on the same token, it feels wet. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and kind of mix this around again. Another reason why I mix in my Repti chip and my Repti soil, because it, hold, it, it soaks up water a little bit better. But you can now see it's starting to get there into that consistency of wet, but there is no water coming from my hand. So that is what I want to see. Not overthinking it, just spraying, moving back over to this side, okay? All right, so this is that hot spot that we talked about. Now you're gonna get a nice humid amount. Look at, this is exactly what, this is it right here, okay? So this hot side is done. So I'm gonna put this right back on top there and I'm gonna finish again, first spray. So I'm doing a little extra right now. Now, and right after I do this first spray, I'm gonna talk about how often you wanna spray this down each time. But here we go. Again, look how dry that just got again, look at that. So a lot of you are not spraying down the cages enough and you're dealing with issues of, of um, bad sheds. Look how much I just sprayed. This is completely dry, completely. So we're gonna to continue to spray, get it to a point where we're good. Okay, so let's let's pretend that we are good now, even though this is still a little bit dry. Okay, we're gonna put this back, and now I'm gonna show you how often and how much to spray. If, if you have your tank set up nicely, all of it is to the consistency that we just showed you. Now, take a look. 
You're going to do this two to three times a week, depending on your location, if it's really dry in your environment or not. But here in California, you're going to do this about two to three times, okay? Maybe every other day, every third day, whatever it is. Here we go. All of it is good, and you're going to come in with your sprayer, and this is it. You're going to go start on the cold side, count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm onto the hot side. 10, 11, 12, lifting this up, 13. Where are we? We're about maybe 20 seconds now. Okay, keep going, still going. We're about 30 seconds in. Still going. Okay, now I'm stopping. So I'm about 35, 40 seconds tops. What did I miss? The most important part, underneath the hide. I might take my snake out at this point so I'm not hosing my snake down. Maybe hold him, play with him or her for a minute. And I'm gonna go inside their humid hide and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. Close that up and that's it. And I'm gonna do that two to three times a week. And if you do that, these little black things that tell you what the humidity reader is, I don't care what they say, half the time they're wrong, you're gonna have a perfect environment uh, and your snake is gonna shed, it's gonna be eating, and as long as you take your little temp gun, so here's the last thing I'll say is, you have this little temp gun. First off, I would always set up your enclosure a few days before you get a new snake. You wanna make sure that this is all reading correctly before you put a living animal inside. So. After this, if I take this temp gun and I do any reading in here, it's gonna be way off. Water is gonna, what's gonna, this is gonna read the water temperature before it reads anything else. So I would let this settle down, give it maybe 24 hours, come back and, and read the cold side, maybe read just the glass where it is, read the top of the water dish or something where it's not wet. Um, and then last but not least, come in here and just raise this little hot, uh, the, the height on the hot side, and, and get a reading of underneath that. And that should read, um, if you just wet it, obviously it's not gonna be right, but within maybe the next day, it should read in the eight in the high 80s. And if you're doing that, you're doing it right. Um, and uh, I hope this video helped everybody. Um, I, this is it, this is what I know, this is what has worked for me. Um, if you guys have questions um, or comments, please leave them. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate all the support that's been coming in. Um, check out our Instagram. We always have snakes for sale, um, lizards, frogs, amphibians of all sorts. So um, that's scales, reptiles with a Z, scales, reptiles. All right, thanks. See you next time.